presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now trading down four. Nasdaq's up 29. S&P's uh, up 350, and yeah, you don't hear that growl because uh, my throat feels great, but uh, <laughs> uh, when you project it, it doesn't feel great. But anyway, that will be over. Every day it's getting better. Gold, gold contract trading up by $4.80 at 1944 an ounce. We get uh, silver up 12 cents, $23.81 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 65 cents, $90.28 a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10 year note. Up nine ticks, trading 108.22. The 30 year up 20 ticks at 116.29 in King Dollar. King Dollar right now trading up. Where are you? We died. There we go. Come on. There we go, right there. Up 197 ticks, trading 105.560. Euro 106, yen trading at 148, and the British pound at 122 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877. 927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Wonder we'll what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, you came down hard yesterday with volume. You had a big expansion of volume. In the S&Ps case, what you did is you broke the swing, and you broke the swing with volume. And, you know, your next stop, this is like, you know, we always talk about three-decker houses. The bottom line is that, you know, you just basically went, you know, you broke through the floor, and so the next floor is laying down here at that 419, 420 area. That's how it's set up. Uh, you know, we had volume yesterday, as I said at the top of the show here today. Now, you're getting below that number today, but you don't really have an rejection of lower price. You know, you know somewhat, yeah, you really don't. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this one here today. You got to 430.55, and the swing point is the 4. 3301 and we're at 43257. So you need you need the rejection, then you gotta get back inside this range. And if we go to the Qs, there's a different story inside the Qs now. The Qs are definitely more bullish than the S and P's. So if you take a look at the Qs, you're gonna see that the Qs never took out its swing. You know, we come down hard, gapped away, you know, you had uh, almost 70 million shares yesterday. That was going into 61. You have only 37 today. Now, that, that could be that, okay, you're setting up an ABC structure down. Either way, I suspect, more than likely, we're going to see the Qs basically go after the swing. And you know, we'll see how this shakes out. And it's all going to be, I'm going to do gold and everything else for you, too, but it's all about right here. This is just pretty amazing how the dollar is running, you know, they're running markets. And it makes sense, too, because, you know, everything's bought with a currency. And the bottom line is that the higher the currency gets, the stronger it gets, while the weaker everyone else's currency gets. And the, the number, you know, on the S&P 500, something like it's over like 50 percent earnings that come from overseas. So when this dollar gets strong like this, you know, bottom line, it's going to hit S&P numbers. So you can see when you take a look at the, the way this is set up, you know, the, the magic number is 104.699. We're at 105.556. On Wednesday, we came down to that number. We got underneath that number and then said, see, you don't want to be here. Came all the way back up. Now, the last two days, it's messing around again, meaning, you know, these are both inverted hammers. So it's like, okay, those on, a, on a council charting, candlestick charting, that, that, those are negatives. But the bottom line, we know that this thing is just plowed forward. And it's going to take quite a bit for that to get under this level because... The buyers came in hand over fist on Wednesday when Powell came out with his speech 
at 230. Now, let's go take a look at the 10-year, because the 10-year and the 30-year, they bro both broke their lows. They broke their swings. Out here today, what you have is you only have 121,000 contracts. So let's take a look at this. So I don't think we got to the low of yesterday, though. That's 108. Yeah, it's interesting. We didn't. So, so what happened yesterday, you get out, you get out to 10808 yesterday, you did 2.16 million shares, contracts rather. So you only got to 10809 today, and you've done 101.2 million contracts. It would have been better if that got under that number, because then that would be saying, okay, there's no more sellers left. That's not what that's saying right now. And then if we take a look at this and we put this on a much larger position calendar-wise, what you're going to see is that what we're looking for here, folks, when we're doing this, is that we're looking for the next swing point and where the some sort of support would be. So when we take a look at this, what you're going to see is that, you know, we're back to 2007, 2008 numbers. We're below the number a year ago. And you're basically into, yeah, I mean, you know, this thing could get a 104. If it goes to 104, man, it's going to be pretty intense. If it goes to 104, you're talking about a 10-year that's going to be running at 6%. Now, the top of those levels are where we are kind of right now, the 108 to 109 level. So if we go like this, this is where this gets interesting. See, we're right there. And, you know, we'll see whether that's enough support or, in fact, What's going to happen is that it's going to blow this baby right through. And if we do take a look at the 30 and we do the same deal, and it's going to depend on, you know, the, well, of course, it's depending on the Fed and just how much they want to squeeze the economy. I think they have to squeeze the economy in order to shut down inflation. So if we take a look at the 30, what you're looking at, we're also back to the 2010 level. We're 116. Now, what happens here, yeah, see, this got a lot of support right where we are right here. 116, what is that, 115? Doesn't look to me. This has got to be hard to break this level on, on the 30. I mean, if you do, if you do break the 114, then, <laughs> then what you do have game is 104, which would bring us back to uh, 2006 levels. So... And that's the game. The game, the game right now is all about interest rate structure. That's, that's, that's what's moving markets here. Because the rates not only went up, but they went up very quick. Now the market's saying, okay, are we going to go sideways? Are we going to get one more rate hike? And we're going to stay at that higher level for a longer period of time. You know, because what's going to make them go down, you know? Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 51, Nasdaq's up 56, S&P's are up 12. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, and I forgot to read the card. Let's do this first. Always do your best. Surrender and let go of the past. I love this card. Whatever life takes away from you, let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you allow yourself to be fully alive in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can enjoy the dream that is happening right here, right now. So market-wise out here, you know, Dow's up 50, Nasdaq's up 62, S&P's up 12 and a half. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, uh, so Bob Mendez, folks, Robert Mendez, right, he got indicted today. And you think, you know, it's amazing, these politicians, man, that... You know, you think they'd smarten up. I mean, this guy got indicted 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and got away with it, okay? It was a hung jury. And what I mean by this, getting, maybe he wasn't innocent, who knows, okay? But the bottom line is, is that when you read the story and you see, and the reason I'm bringing it up is that not many of us have seen a kilo of gold. And here, watch this. This is like crazy, man. So. When the feds went in his house, the feds went in his house about a year ago. And when the feds went in his house, they, they got 486,000 in cash and like all stuffed in all his suits and all this stuff, right? They got two one kilo gram bars of gold and 11 one ounce bars. But look at these guys, oh, you gotta see these kilos. These kilos are so cool. There's all the cash, but look at those. It's like, okay, man, you know, you think, I mean, if you're doing something, you're, you're particularly you got indicted before, are you really going to stash all the stuff right in your house, man? <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's like, uh, I don't know, it's like, they should have a criminal class 101 or something, and, you know, you don't keep your cash with you, right? Crazy, man. Totally crazy. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, heavy hitters out here. So first, we'll start with the Amazon. So we're coming up to the holidays. You know, Amazon out here yesterday, bottom line, come down with volume as, as the market did. You're at the bottom of the consolidation with Amazon. The Amazon's consolidation bottom here is approximately uh, the 126, 128 area. Uh, what Amazon did out here today is that you have a contraction but you don't have a full rejection. You know, I, I mean, if Amazon could close at 132 today, that'd be a different ball game. You know, we traded down to 128, right now you're at 129.79. You know, in this particular case, what you have done, now this is where this gets interesting, when you talk about gaps, okay? 
Amazon had a gap up, right? And then what ends up happening, you know, when they come out with their earnings, they had a gap up from the, you know, 126 area, they go all the way to 141. Then they all get a high going of 145. Well, right at the same gap, this is always so weird when this happens, man, that approximately at the same place, it gaps down. You know, so bottom line is that you can see on the gap up, however, it has much more volume than on the way down. So most times that's just a consolidation. We go to Google and we take a look at Google. Google's uh, fighting for um, it, its monopolistic ways right now in court. And we have a Google, you know, Google's up uh, 82 cents right now, trading 10 million. And the reason I'm bringing Google up, Google's going to fill this gap. I mean, you know, the, the gap here is at the one, what's that, one, 132, Google's gap is at 123. That thing's going to get filled. You can see it's making its way down to that level. That's all, that always gets dangerous. Once the equities turn, if you have a gap that's underneath it, you really got to be careful. Next time Google's coming out with numbers, it's going to be on the 25th of October. NVDA, NVIDIA, another high flyer. We take a look at NVIDIA. No gap on NVIDIA. Now look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA's strong, man. That's, now this is a, look at this. This is a strong stock, man. Just, okay, so you set up. The bottom of this setup is 394. You know, we, go, we get down to 412. But that's still a nice setup. Even when we pull back, the, you, now you can see the market itself had pulled back with a lot of volume. NVIDIA didn't. It just didn't, you know. I mean, yesterday we had, you know, 40, 48 million. It's like, okay, you know, this has a high out here that has uh, 125 million. That one, yeah, 125. So that's saying it's going to be back topside. Put this on a weekly. Yeah, you can see on the weekly. Look on the weekly here. This is pretty cut. But this is really cool, actually. Look at this. On the weekly, it's coming into a swing point that had 292 million, and we've only done 209 million. That's the type of pullback that you want to see. That's exactly the type of pullback you want to see. Let's go to uh, Apple, take a look at Apple, and we'll do Microsoft. So if we take a look at Apple, Apple's, this is a danger place for Apple. Apple's building cause, because Apple hasn't hit its swing point yet. And so right there has a lot of support, which is 174. Now, that 174 level, see that's, that's going way back to April. And when you start bouncing around like this, you can see that the, the, the bounce that Apple had, the last bounce that Apple had was anemic beyond belief. It was a, no, it was a 0.382. So that's not bad, it's not great, but that's, it wasn't a 5.0. So that's saying that's still building cause for lower prices. And then we do Microsoft, we take a look at Microsoft out here. Microsoft, look at the volume on Microsoft, man. That was good volume. So let's see what we have here. Put this on a weekly. You want to put some of these on weeklies because, you know, the bottom line is that, yeah, right here. Let's see. Put this up. So Microsoft can bang out. What is that? That's 308 or 319. On a weekly, it's not bad, you know, but it's heavier than the week the swing point is going into. Now, this is another one that what ended up happening is that it hasn't reached the swing point yet, which is a big number, you know. We take a look at a couple of the car companies because that the, the auto workers are going to extend that strike. This, uh, I believe they already did, maybe. Uh, you get GM still trading at 32.73. We put this on a weekly. It's still in a consolidation. Oh, I got to tell you the story about Carvana. C-A-R, listen to this. The, this is pretty amazing, actually. So Carvana, right? We know that on the run-up, 
that stock was going crazy. And they, they seemed to be paying, they were paying people more than the cars were worth. Well, bottom line is that there was someone in the office the other day, um, yeah, it was best of his friend, uh, Kyle. Bottom line, he's selling a car, and they gave him a quote of like 14800 about three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, bottom line, the, he didn't take the quote, and they came back uh, two days ago, and they upped it by like 2500 So it's going to get interesting. So they're using, they're figuring that if cars ain't coming out, the bottom line, they're taking the risk that car prices are going to go up pretty wild. Man. So the consumer can make out there. <laughs> and the last time this happened with Carvana, all the consumers made out and the stock went down beyond belief. Dow's up 60, Nasdaq's up 68, S&P's up 14. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 44. You got the Nasdaq up 63. S&Ps are up 12. And so, obesity drugs, folks, okay? This is going to be the next, well, this is the next field day for Eli Lilly, that's for sure. So check this out. They figure that by the year 2035, it's going to be a $100 billion market. So it's, it's pretty amazing, man. Um, you know, we all know that through, you know, whether it's TV ads or all that, Weight Watchers, you know, there's been a million different programs out there that, you know, people want to lose weight. It's hard to lose weight. 
They take it off, then they put it back on. Most of them, a lot of them are speed-related, uh, you know, drugs. I'm not quite sure how this, this drug works here, but the bottom line is that uh, it's not only working, you know, if you take a look at Eli Lilly. So look at this, look at this chart, man. <laughs> you know, you take a look at this. This is, yeah, 2019. 2019, Eli Lilly's trading at $111, and you're at 553. This is one of the big players inside it. And the amount of bread is pretty amazing. That when you take a look at it revenue-wise, yeah, look at this. You got a drug company that five years ago was doing $22 billion, this year $33 billion, And you're growing by, that's growing by 20%, man. Oh, my God. It's growing by 20%. The thing that's really strange, right? Not strange, but you can see the westernization, you know, of course it happened in the United States first, but wherever <laughs> western food goes, you know, I remember growing up, you know, when someone was overweight, the, first off, there were very few people that were overweight, and like an overweight person then would be like a normal person now. <laughs> That's what's really strange about this whole thing, okay? It's just, and it isn't, it has to do with our diets, man. It has to do with the amount of junk food and that we're getting fed in the middle of those aisles. And you know, the bottom line, once you get hooked on them, you're done. You know, hooked on sugar, hooked on, you know, th those middle aisles, those middle aisles, they not only put weight on you, they kill you. Now that's where uh, there's no doubt this weight drug is gonna help many people because if they just, you know, can't help themselves, at least if you're not lugging around that kind of weight, you can take that drug, your chances of, you know, your heart strokes go down pretty dramatically because of the fact of the matter is, you know, you start lugging around an extra 50, say, just lug around a 10 pound sack of potatoes, and never mind, you know, 50, 100 pounds. So there, there's, there's good in it. The, the thing that is kind of wild, though, no, it is wild, is that if you remember going back, uh, I forget the name of the song, but there was a song in the 70s that there was like going to be a pill for everything. And we're getting pretty close to that, man. <laughs> that, you know, there's, there's a pill for everything. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that's cool because I, I'm not quite sure the quality of life that you have when there's a pill for everything. It's like, okay, really? How about, you know, a nice, cleanest diet you could get, get the energy that you're supposed to be getting off that diet, you're gonna feel good, it's gonna taste good, but once you get that sugar taste, man, you know, I know myself, what, what happens is that, you know, like, you never can have one really good cookie, right? <laughs> it's not even close, man. Just, it doesn't happen, right? You get one, and uh, one of uh, Olivia's boyfriend, Carson, they stop, they, they get, this is, if you haven't seen one of these places yet, listen, as I'm talking about staying healthy, but you want to taste one of these, <laughs> is uh, crumbles. So they have these crumbles, these cookie places inside uh, these malls. Oh, my God. And you know what they do? The cookies are about this big, but then they give you a, like a slicer that just goes on top of it, so it cuts it in quarters, because all you want is a quarter. But I'm telling you, that cookie, like, is insane. And we talk about cookies. If you want to see something that, you know, bottom line, if you're growing too fast as a business, you know, I've talked about the History Channel before, the, the food that built America, right? Well, there's a, um, there's one segment on Famous Amos and on his cookies. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that this guy was one of the first guys that came out, you know, with... An incredible recipe, started out of his garage in San Francisco, blew it up beyond belief. But as he was blowing it up, what would end up happening, he really wasn't paying attention to the business aspect of it. He's a great marketer. He kept taking in investors. And at one point, what ended up happening is that he ended up selling and selling more stock and more stock. To cut to the chase, to the bottom line, what ends up happening is that he ended up selling the rest of his equity for like 1.4 million or something. And then he was 
an advisor for a few years to, you know, the company that took it over. And what ended up happening, the first thing the company did when they took it over, they wanted to basically have more shelf life. So what do they do? They change the recipe. He comes into the office saying, I can't believe you changed the recipe, did that, and bottom line, they said, hey, we can do whatever we want to do, and, you know, in fact, why don't you just leave right now? Sad story, actually, and, you know, as wild as that, when Bridget and I were actually coming back, you know, we got the dog that's flown in from Germany yesterday, you know, the night before last, and we're at a cargo, uh, we're waiting at cargo to pick it up, and we're starving, there's nothing to eat, because we had been going all day. <laughs> and the vending machine was Famous Amos. And Bridget and I had both uh, listened to this program. I said, well, why don't you get the cookies and try them? And you know what? There's nothing to those cookies, man. But I can see why they did it, because of shelf life. You know? But bottom line is that uh, you know, I'm sure there's many stories like that. You, know, you sell too much equity, you grow too fast. Growing too fast is a huge deal in the context of um, if the growth is faster than the cash is coming in and you have one blurb, you can be done in two seconds. It's always better to build a huge foundation so that as, it, as you're growing, that, found, that, that growth is on top of a big solid foundation. It might take you a little bit longer at the beginning, but then you can add on to that in a, a very substantial way. And you got to make sure it's the right deal. You know, like with McDonald's, as soon as he really understood that whole, man, I'm in the real estate business, that's when he could grow exponentially because what ended up happening is that the franchisees are paying him rent, they're paying him for all the food, and McDonald's Corporation owns all the real estate. It's, it's you know, imagine, imagine owning... And this started in the 50s, okay? And you're going up, and even to this day, you own the real estate on a continual basis. Yeah. Dow. Dow Industrials right now, that just went negative. Uh, that sounds six. You get the NASDAQ up 46. S&Ps are up five and a half. Uh, gold's up uh, 510. You get silver up 13 cents. Stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 35. Nasdaq's up 36. S&P's up 2.5. Yeah, and I got a little help from the den here. And this is really crazy, actually. You know, the one of the, the groups was Zagger and Evans. And the pill you took today... And that might have been the same ones that wrote in the year 2025, and <laughs> it's 2023, man. <laughs> so that's really kind of strange, actually, that uh, they're coming down to that point, right? Pretty, that's pretty wild, actually. No, there's no doubt about that. Let's go take a look at the gold market. So let's go to the GDX first. You got that, you know, the dollar continues higher. The GDX has been messing around, you know, for quite some time right now. We've been consolidating out here at a lower level uh, going all the way back to July. You had strength, you know, bottom line, when we hit highs. We came down yesterday with volume, but it didn't get the lower price, meaning it didn't get to a swing point. We take this on a weekly, and on a weekly, now this gets cool, because you can see what happened here. On the weekly, you actually get a higher high, and we get some good volume. You know, so that's, that's still a decent setup. We go take a look at the GLD. Let's see how the GLD is setting up. So that was the GDX. Now the GLD, I'll put this on a weekly too. Okay, so same setup. It's not bad, man. The GLD, I'm going to come in with 29 million and you're going into 28 million. Yeah, see that? So this thing was still wants higher price, man, even though... You know, we had a high out here this week of, uh, what is that, 180. You know, you got, you, you... Sorry about this one. We're trading right now, 178.58. Well, let's go take a look at a couple of the streamers, RGLD. So you got Royal Gold. Well, this is this is trading just like the G, uh, the GDX. The streamers are important. Frank, let's do a look at Franco Nevada FNV, because when the streamers go, that's when you know gold's going. Also, and the streamers. What the streamers mean, folks, is that you know Franco Nevada has always been a strong stock, and in this case, it's still stronger than World Gold too. There's no doubt. Is that the way? The, the way their business plan works is that they work as a bank, you know. And they're financing the gold companies. You can see in this particular case, Franco Nevada, you know, only has 35 employees, but yet revenue, where do you see this? It's $1.3 billion. How's that, right? That is, that is a monster number. And they are growing in the United States by 7% a year and Canada by 2% a year. What's going to get interesting is this, is that... And here, I'll bring up uh, Mag Silva, because this is, this is an equity. You know, if you got the gold report, you know, I did a little write-up on this thing. And if you haven't got the gold report yet, folks, come over to the website. Get the gold report. It's 30-day money-back guarantee. So when you look at Mag Silva, so check this out. You know, I'm going to bring this back. Okay, this was the 
premier, strongest stock, flat out. It was an exploration stock first. Guy did the right thing, bottom line, stock explodes up to the $24 area, right? When you take a look at the description and the revenue, you're gonna see, even to this day, okay, the revenue, you know, two years ago, they took in nothing. This year, they're taking in 362 million, next year, they're taking in 428 million. Now, and they're making money, okay? So, when you look at something like this, you say, okay, why isn't the stock higher? Well, it's not higher because of the aspect that they are dealing with one district in Mexico where their whole ball of wax is, okay? And what has happened in Mexico is this, is that the, the, new, the way the new law works is that the amount of time that Normally, the amount of time was about 50 years, right? The amount of time can be cut in half almost at any time. The, what the market's worrying about is that if they can do that with a pen, which they, which they did, which the new president did, and then the second part of that, this, one, this one's a really a big one for the exploration companies. So if you're, if you're dealing with small gold or silver companies that are exploration companies, this is a crucial one, because watch how this plays out. If you have a mining claim and you don't do anything within the first two years, they can take that mining claim right back. So two different things are gonna happen. You're not gonna have as many scams going, probably, because there's plenty of Canadian, small Canadian stocks that are flat out and out scams, meaning you know they've been going on for years. You, you get, you know, you get a few rocks, you go up to the Canadian exchange, you put it on the exchange, say, I got rocks, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, that's going to be kaput because the market knows now that if you don't do anything in two years, it's going to be a problem. Now, that two-year time frame, though, is really unreasonable. The reason being is that it takes, you know, it takes a few years just to raise money. Then you're going to start, you know, drilling the holes. So it's changed quite dramatically doing business in Mexico versus the United States versus Canada versus Australia. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I've, you know, when the first run up in gold, when gold went from uh, 252 to just 1100, our own Congress start yapping like crazy about the aspect of the miners in Nevada, you know? So it's just like anything else. When someone thinks that, you know, someone else is a better deal, you're gonna start hearing, you know, yap, 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 well, let me take, uh, you know, some of this money over here because we wanna spend more money. So we'll see where it, we'll see where it shakes out. But that's one of the main reasons that, you know, that is happening. Now, it gets interesting, so check this out. So if you go to Barrick Gold, right, and, you know, the, you know, many of you have heard Mark Bristow on TFNN. This, this guy here, he's not scared of anything, man. Meaning, he goes to, and it makes sense, too, because he grew up in South Africa. He grew up in apartheid. He, is, he was the actual person that split up the mining companies for apartheid. And when he was doing that, he could not take any of the mines in South Africa. So what he did, he went to the worst places in Africa, that, when I say the worst places, the most politically unstable places, and, you know, that was Rangel Resources, and then Barrick bought them out. And the bottom line is that, you know, he found gold that, you know, was so inexpensive, it's unbelievable. Now he's doing the same thing with Barrick, and he's doing it with copper. So now what's happening is that, is it right here? One second. He's saying that, uh, yeah. So he's going after a, a huge uh, copper project in Pakistan. And the bottom line is that, you know, he's saying flat out, he knows that, you know, other executives are, you know, worried about, you know, tricky regions in the world. And, you know, the bottom line is that he has experience in the tricky regions. And most times, 
you know, when you read what he did and see what he did, it's pretty cool. He opened schools in these communities. He, you know, just gets things going. That's the bottom line. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. The Dow, Dow Industrials right now are going to be down 111. You get the Nasdaq off 19, S&Ps are off 12. So you get a market that couldn't hold price out here today. If we take a look at the uh, futures first, what you're going to see... As that futures out here went from a price point of uh, 43.99 to 43.60, and you can see this down bar. I mean, they they came in with some action here 10 minutes ago. That's a big down bar with some real real volume behind them. We take a look at the spy. What you're going to have out here is that you're going to be lower. You know, the volume is going to be slightly not as big. You're at 75 million though. And you know, you broke you broke down, you know. So this next stop is that 424.19, you know, because you, you you definitely don't have a rejection of lower price. And then if we go to the Qs, well, actually, let's go to the dollar because you, what you're going to see inside the dollar, you're going to see inside the dollar as the day went on, the dollar just kept getting stronger. I mean, the, it's all about this dollar, you know. We started out the day and the futures were up. The dollar was down there at 105.318. Right now, you're at 105.597. You know, it's, it's all contingent on the dollar. You know, the thing that's pretty wild is that, you know, I was talking about the aspect of how it hits the Fortune 500 companies. 
and there's a huge amount of people that are on the, the fence that the dollar is going to go higher. Most times when you see that actually happen and you see the aspect of how much news there is and everything else and the aspect of, um, you know, the dollar strength and all of this is that that's when you get getting near highs. And then, you know, if, if you take a look at the actual structure itself, particularly because it's been messing around with this. When I say messing around with it, it not only was messing around before it hit it, it still continues to mess around after. So we're talking almost three or four weeks here. Okay, we'll see where it goes. Listen, folks, have a great weekend, a safe weekend. Come back and visit Tommy Monday morning, kicks us off 9 a.m. And let's see if I can be growling or prowling by Monday. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Thank you.